welcome everyone for the Tuesday evening uh, endgame class and uh, I prepared a few positions to show you but uh, I want to start out with this position and uh, in a lot of my previous lectures I mentioned about this uh, bishop and knight checkmate method and I think many people want to learn exactly how to checkmate so I will show you a very easy way how to win even though it may seem a little bit difficult to do but you will learn after this class okay you're not going to have this very often this happening to you but uh, it's good to know how to win it so the first thing you have to uh, understand is if you have a light square bishop you can only checkmate the a black king either on a8 or h1 in one of these two corners okay so that's the first first thing you have to understand so step one is to understand that um, if your opponent is defending uh, you know correctly he's not just going to go to this corner he's going to go to the dark color corner on h8 okay so your first step is going to be to push his king to a corner okay so remember that first thing you do you push the king to the corner so i will show you how to do that so you move up let's say he goes here then you develop your knight he will go back you get come forward then you go bishop check and you go bishop e4 now you put the bish bishop between this king and this king so now he has to go back so you continue doing that for a while and then again he doesn't want to go to the center because then you can push him to the, this corner he's going to go to this side okay so i think you should be able to to get this uh it shouldn't be that difficult to get this position okay so knight e4 so he will go here and now we basically put him in the corner so we have our bishop on a good position here we don't want to move it so the king is perfectly placed the next step is to bring the knight to f7 okay because you need a knight to control this square that's the only way for you to do that you cannot control this with a bishop so you control this with a knight and now he cannot come to g7 and h7 so he has to go here so now it's our turn so we have to if you get at this situation you make a waiting move with the bishop don't touch the king or a knight just a waiting move he will go here and then you go bishop h7 so now you take away this square so now he has to go this way and this is what we want we're slowly pushing him to this corner on h8 uh, on a8 okay and now the first step is already accomplished we pushed him to a corner and now we're next step is now to push him to a8 the only way you can do that is you have to remember this idea w maneuver so basically your knight is going to move like this so remember that okay so w maneuver is very very important to remember okay so that's the that's the key to remember okay so so remember that idea so that's why in this position you will start out with a move knight e5 that's the first part of your w so he has two options we'll look at both this or this right so if they go here we go check pay attention because then uh, second time i'm going to ask you how to do this so make sure you will be able to do this now you move the king so see you always have to control the square so he cannot escape back so he goes here you go here now he goes here check again this is taken now you go bishop f7 square is taken and now you go knight c5 again the squares are taken so it has to go here check and you get here got the opposition get the king here check all right so now all you have to do is bring the knight to a6 so you go here he goes here now you push wait with the bishop he will have to go here now the square is taken all the squares are taken now you check now he is on a8 and bishop a6 mates okay that's one idea 
So that should be the, the, the final position, okay? Take a good look at this position, take a picture of it if you want, but that's the way you will checkmate, okay? So let's look at this other line that Black can try to do here. Very important because, again, if you don't know what to do here, when they go King D8, you can really spoil this. By the way, you have only 50 moves to win this in a real game, okay? And uh, there, were, there, were, there were incidents where very strong chess players didn't know how to do this. And uh, many incidents, very strong players, they just never studied it. And it was very difficult for them to come up with everything over the board. So, if he goes here, you have to go king d7 here. Now, if he goes king e8, you just go knight d7, and then you're back to that first position. So they go king d7. Now they're trying to escape with the king, okay? And now you have to find the right move to stop him from escaping here. So let me ask you a question here. Who knows the best move here for white? What would be that move here to control a very important squares so the king doesn't escape from the corner? You have knight c4, but uh, unfortunately you're not controlling c6 squares, so I can come up and walk, walk up here, you know? So what is the idea, huh? What is the idea you can really try to do here? Yes? No, no, you have to control this square. See, he's, he's trying to go to b6. If you let him go to b6, that's it. His king is going to escape from there, okay? So you need to make a move. Knight c6, knight c4 unfortunately allows this square, and you need to control both squares here, okay? So what's the move here? Correct. Knight d7. Remember, you got to control the dark squares, and you got to now use your bishop to cut him off now so he doesn't escape. And which, which move is going to do that? To stop him from coming in. Yes. Bishop d3, perfect. Now, the knight is controlling this squares, and the bishop is now controlling this. So he can't do anything. He has to go back. Now, one more cut, okay? Now you're going to push him to the back rank. So it's like he made an attempt to escape, but then you pushed him back. And now you continue with your idea. Check. Now you make a waiting move. Waiting move is very important to remember. You make a waiting move, and he goes here. Now you do the second part of the W maneuver. You remember the move? Correct. If I go here, you just go king c6, so I have to go here, continue, mm -hmm. okay, now put the king on the maximal position, and now, now, and now, Waiting move. Remember, remember waiting move. Everybody should remember the waiting move. Check. Bishop c6. So that's the final position. Okay. So it's really not that difficult uh, to to learn this. Okay. So now you learn this. So I want to uh, do a, like a practice with you. Okay. Where you know you. I'll ask all of you just just to see if you can do it. Okay. So so what are the key steps to do this remember so what was the first step you have to do when you get this position the very first step is first first you have to understand that you can only checkmate the king either on h1 or a8 that's just the knowledge you understand that so the first step is to do what to make this work please raise, raise your hand yes push him to the corner any corner okay if he goes to the light corner, it's perfect. We made him right there, you know? So, push him to the corner is the first step. What's the second step? Yes? Okay, by using which idea? By using which idea? There is something, remember? Something in a shape, yes? W maneuver, correct. You use the W maneuver, that's how the knight moves, right? Big W. Remember that movement of the knight, okay? There might be other ways to do it too, but the easiest way is to remember the W, okay? And then you use the W to go to the corner, and you gotta be accurate. 
if you let him escape one time, then you're cutting very close to that 50 move rule, okay? So you probably still can do it if you let him escape one time from there, but it's cutting it very close, so you don't want to do it. All right. Let's start now. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand, and I'm going to play black. You're going to be white, and I'm not going to be able to help you, so you have to try to win this. Okay, so who wants to start? Go ahead. Yes. Kingy two. Kingy two, okay. I just showed you, so you know the concept. It's not that difficult. Okay, yes? Correct. And we'll count the moves at the end, see how many moves it takes to win. Next. Always, if you're trying to push him back, always go in front of him. Never go on the side. In front, okay? Get the opposition, okay? Remember that? Opposition. So he goes here. Now, yes? D3. Use the bishop in, okay? And now what else did I tell you about this? When the kings are in front of each other, what's the best way to push his king back? Put the bishop between his king and your king. That's a very important idea to remember because now you control the squares. You control the squares. And the king cannot go anywhere. Okay? He goes here. Continue. Okay? Same idea we're using, correct? E5. King G5 is also possible, but I like King G5 a little bit better. Now, if we move the king, then he has this F6 square. So let's control that square, right? Better. Yes, because later on we're going to go to F7, so it's, it's better to go from E4 there. So he goes here. You could go knight d6, but we play king e6. Both moves are good. See, it's not like you have to do exactly this way. This part is not that important. You can do other ways too. The key is actually to get this position. Like you got this position. Now, how are you going to push him from the black corner to the white corner? That's the key to understand. How are we going to do that? Please raise your hand. Yes? Correct. What is the plan? F7, and now the knight on F7 is controlling that H8 square. H7 square is controlled by the light squared bishop, okay? So now, what do we call this idea? Oftentimes, you're going to see we're going to make this move. What is this idea called? Waiting. waiting move, okay? So you have to remember the waiting move idea. It's, it's, uh, you'll be surprised how important it is to do this waiting move in endgame positions. You'll be totally surprised how important that is. King f8. And now, perfect. You got it. And now, what does this look like to you? W maneuver. I would say probably one of the most important things is to remember the W maneuver. That's probably the, the crucial thing you have to do, you know? You remember the W maneuver, the rest you, you should be able to do it. So, it starts out with... Now, there are two options. Let's do both. I'll start out with this one, the easy one. Check, right? Remember, if king walks or a king walks. Remember that, right? It's like he walks, you get the opposition. He walks, you walk, get the opposition. Now, you're trying to escape on f7. You're going to let that happen? Stop it. And now what kind of move we need again? What do we call that move? Waiting move. You could also go bishop h5. But see, for example, if you don't know that now, you make any other move, you're going to mess it up by maybe five moves, actually, if you don't know that. So it's important to know this waiting moves and ideas. I mean, again, you're not going to have this every day. This is going to be very rare. You're not even going to have this once a year, this position. But you have to make sure you know how to win it. King h8. Now, what do we do? If king c6, he goes back to d8. 
which plan we have to continue w maneuver w right go ahead you got it now it goes here perfect okay uh, 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 see you're rushing he went there what are you supposed to do king b6 get it's like opposition it's like some kind of an opposition okay with the knight between the kings remember the opposition now he's trying to escape what do you do now huh knight c5 first get to the point and then okay get to the point first and now what do we call this again waiting move very good excellent that was very good this is actually a lot of very high rated players don't know how to win this this is very important you guys are doing great no I mean I have other positions but let's finish this like and then we do some other positions okay go ahead now he goes king d8 you remember this is the tricky one I would say this is the one a lot of people a little bit get confused because it seems like it almost seems like he's escaping from the the back rank you know but how are you gonna prevent him from doing that yes correct now perfect very nice look at those highlighted squares huh look at those highlighted squares he cannot do anything now he has to go back it's like he tried to make an attempt to escape but you stopped him and he just couldn't do anything so now he goes here now very important move here to totally push him back to totally push him to the back rank yes what's the move yes no 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 not the king bishop before remember centralizing the bishop now he has to go back to the back rank he goes here continue opposition right correct okay okay all right okay again don't rush with that move just get the knight in first waiting move checkmate bravo very good everybody understand now so if i have a dark square bishop then you have to he's going to go to the light corner you just have to use the same exact idea same exact method to drive him from that uh, the light corner to the dark corner to win okay so it's always the color of your bishop okay it's always the color of your bishop that's that's what you have to try to remember since we're on this topic i feel like it would be a good idea also to do the two bishops let me ask you a question can you do checkmate with two knights if you just have two knights and he has a king but that seems like a huge advantage no six pawn advantage and you cannot win aha uh -huh. excellent point yes if he has a pawn I want to do one example of that okay one example of that I just thought about it then we'll do the bishops it's amazing if you take the pawn off you cannot win but with the pawn on the board you can actually win this okay it's actually uh, made in five so please think first I need you to calculate as much as you can so it's white to play again two knights alone versus the king it's a draw actually recently there was a game between two strong grandmasters where actually they didn't know. The, no the guy was trying to win with white but what happened was he just ran out of pawns and his opponent sacrificed his rook to the last pawn and they just look at each other like okay it's a draw but 
So uh, the guy with two extra knights wasn't happy because it almost feels like it's sort of unfair, you know, you have this six pawn advantage, but you cannot win this. So who can calculate all the five moves in his head and then raise the hand and say, I have the whole thing. Five moves. It's actually, it's only one line. It's not that many lines. Once again, if the pawn was not there on h5, it's just, you cannot mate him because it's going to be stealing. In fact, you can mate him, but if he makes like a huge blunder, you know, technically you can win that position, but that's going to require a huge blunder from him to win it. Okay? It's like you're going to have a check, he has to go to the corner, then you mate him. Knight f5, can you be more specific? There are two knights can go there. Which knight? Uh, the one h, that's h, knight h, f5, okay? We call that. Now I say take my pawn. Take my pawn. Do you want to take the pawn here? You take the pawn, instant draw. So you can't take the pawn. So what's the second move? Wait, wait, let him finish. Knight d6. Interesting. You're doing it a little bit different way than I thought, but you can still do it. You still have that cushion to do it. You have enough time. Huh? <coughs> That's much better. Now he's in a corner, but he's about to queen. You better hurry up. One, two, one, two. And I get a new coin here. You, you, your knight movement was a little bit not the simplest way, but it was okay. You, got, you still got it. All right. Next. Yes? Knight e8. Knight e8. Correct. I push. There you go. Excellent. Okay. That's good. Uh, you could have also done this way, you know, push, or I would have just gone like this, you know, a little bit simpler, you know, boom, and then I would go here, and I just made, okay, and I'm going to change the position, and I'm going to change the position a little bit, do one more position since we're on this topic, I want to do one more position on this. It's not a difficult position at all, but I just want you to uh, get this. So, you actually have only one knight here, okay? You only have one knight here in this position, okay? But here, again, his own pawn is causing him so many problems here that he can actually win this game in just three moves. White to play and win. It will only take three moves to do that. And that's not your best square. Something a little bit better you have there. Because your knight on f3 is not going to have checks anymore if you go there. So what's the move? Check. He goes to the corner, right? Now what do you do? What do you do? Yes? King G3, I escape. And you allow me to do that. That's a big mistake. You can't let him escape from the corner, remember? You got to keep him in the box. King F1. Now he can't go anywhere. So he has to go here. What do we call that? It's a mate, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about, I don't know about smother mate. It's, it's just a mate, okay? Yeah, it's, it's sort of smothered. Yeah, I, I guess it's boxed in. So perhaps you can call that a smothered mate. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good, okay? All right, let's go back to the two bishops, okay? Because uh, it's very important for you to know that. Okay, so let's say... With two bishops, it's much, much easier than the bishop and knight because you have the color of both corners, so you don't have to worry about which corner you're going to mate him, okay? 
because you have the both colors. So this is a pretty simple way to win and I will show you how to do that, okay? So the concept is uh, simple. You just move the king forward and push the king to back rank or a corner, okay? So let's say he comes here, right? For something like this, you can give a check. Let's give another check. Okay. Now, he, you know, your bishops are controlling a lot of squares. So he, he, let's say if he goes here, king f2. You have to be, since the bishops are very strong, controlling a lot of squares, you have to be careful not to stalemate by accident, okay? I've seen that happening before. Control the squares. Now he goes here, because right here, if you're just not paying attention, you play this move, you're going to stalemate, okay? Because, you know, you just made a quick move without thinking and stalemate. But instead, the easiest way to do is just go here, just... Just allow him to one square to go to, right here. And now we already determined we're going to checkmate him in a corner here, right here. This is where this guy is going, right here. This square is taken, this square is taken, this square is taken. So he has to go here. Now you want to control this square. How are you going to do that? Correct. Now, remember, if he goes down, it's same concept. What do we do? We go down. He goes here, now he wants to go here. How are you going to stop that? Now he goes here. What kind of move we need now? Wait, wait. Well, actually, yeah. We can't even do that. Yeah. We can't even check. So he goes here. King F2. And now we need waiting move, right? It doesn't matter. Any move would be fine as long as you keep this bishop on this diagonal. And now, show me checkmate in two. Easy, huh? Very easy. Okay. Yeah, because we don't have to worry about doing the complicated the W maneuver or anything. It's the concept, you know? Concept is very, very simple. Okay? And you just, just simply follow it through. All right, let's practice that with you and see if you got this. I mean, this is not the only way to do it, but... I mean, you get an idea. Make sure you don't stalemate because the bishops are controlling a lot of amount of squares and we can very easily stalemate. So go ahead. Huh? Hey, don't go here. Don't go here. Don't go to H4, okay? Don't get one mistake. It will be costly, you know? But this is the best way to do it. This is the most effective way to do it, okay? Correct? He goes down, you go down. Remember, he goes down, you go down, okay? That's the ideas, okay? Now... Checkmate. No problem, huh? No problem. Well, yeah, I mean, you have, uh, you know, six, you know, some, you know, bishops are just very strong because they're both colors you have under control, okay? So that's why it's very easy to win. Okay, I want to set up one very important position, and which is a winning position here, and ask you to find the plan, actually, the winning plan here, okay? It's like it's this position basically. White to play and win. Huh? So I've actually seen two grandmasters play, and the player with the white pieces got to this position, 
but he just didn't know how to put his opponent in a suksuan. You know what suksuan means, right? When you put him in a position where anything he makes is just going to make it worse. Okay? So let's see if you can figure out the suksuan position here. It's not like you're going to check, check, and win my rook. It's not going to work like that. If you think I can just check, 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 eventually I'm going to win a rook. Actually, th there is a problem there, actually. You can even end up still mating. Aha, yeah, uh -huh. so that's a very good point you just made. Like, for example, right? You make the move like this, you think you got him, and then he goes check. And that's going to be very, very, bad. very, very bad for us. That's called steel mate. Okay? So it's still not too late to spoil the winning position, okay? It's still not too late to spoil it if you don't play the right thing, you know? So let's see now. He's not going to do that. He's going to go here. Check. See, this is what I was talking about. You come here, you feel like I'm going to win, and then look at that. Look at that. Still mate. See? Tricky, yeah. If you don't know it, very tricky. Very tricky. All right. Uh, you have to put him in a suksuwang, yes. Queen d5, no. I mean, you're not going to spoil anything by playing this move, but I just don't see what do you get after, let's say, I go here. Well, actually, it could work. Sorry, I sh it could work too, actually, but there is a little bit more straightforward way to do it. Look, you have to get a position where his king comes to a7. You put a queen on a square, and then his king has no squares to go to. Okay? You have to control the squares the king can go to, and then he's going to have to move the rook away. If they move the rook away further away, then you're going to give checks and win the rook. You usually you can get this, even if you don't know the concept, you're going to be able to get a position like this where you push him to the corner. But the thing you have to remember is this. You give a check. Okay? He can't block with the rook because that's going to result into a checkmate. Okay? So he has to go here. Okay? And now you play the move queen d8. Fantastic move. Now his king has no squares to go to. He can't go back. He can't do anything. If it goes here, you just pin him. Pin it to win it. So he can't do that. Now he has two options to go either to go either to here or here. Okay? In both cases, if he goes to this moves with the proper checks, you're going to be able to win his rook. This is your suksuan position. So take a picture of this position if you want. This is the key position. You have to know the suksuan, okay? This position is the suksuan position if you're trying to win this. Now, if he goes here, now you're going to have to connect with him either on here or here to win the rook, okay? So the best way to do it, in my opinion, is start out with the check like this. If he goes here, you just go check, and the rook is gone, okay? And you win easily. So he probably will go here. Now you give one more check, because he cannot go here because you have mate. So he has to go here. And now you give a check. He goes in and now connected. That's it. Queen p1 wins the game and the rook. Got it? Excellent. And now, if it goes the other way, it doesn't change anything. Same concept. Go ahead. Check. If he goes here, you go check. Rook goes back here, mate on a1. If he goes here, you go check and you take the rook. He goes here. Now, check, 
No, it's actually even easier this way. You win the rook. So if he goes here, you give a check. And if he goes here, now, just mate on a4. Okay? So the first part to drive the king, it's going to be pretty, you should be able to get it pretty comfortably. But it's important for you to know this uh, idea of putting him into a suksuan. Okay? That's the key position to remember. All right? Okay, that's, that's how you win a position like this, okay? This is a very uh, neat uh, king and pawn position. Uh, you might have seen this before, or the same position on the other side of the board. It's white to play and win. <laughs> well, it's not so surprising you're up a pawn, and usually in a king and pawn endgame that means you're going to be winning it. But... Let's think, okay? Because it's not going to be so simple. Okay, this idea is the only way you can win this if you can somehow maneuver your king and achieve the same exact position with his move. If you do that, what is that idea called? I'm pretty sure I mentioned in some of my lectures this idea. Triangulation, correct. All right, let's see now how you can make this triangulation work, okay? We know it's triangulation, but how are we going to make this work, this triangulation? Huh? That's correct. That's the first move, that you know the rest. Okay? Okay? Uh-huh, correct. So you triangulated it. Now if he goes here, who has the triangulation? We have the triangulation. Now he goes here. What do you do in this case? No. Go forward. Promote the pawn. He goes here. You push. And now we queen, right? Why not? No. Uh -huh. no, no, no rook. Checkmate in three now. Who can do the checkmate in three? Knight, yeah, but you're making it more difficult with the knight. Let's think. Let's, you have three moves. <laughs> Let's, <laughs> Let's think. Let's win in three moves. That means mate in three. You can't put a bishop. That's still winning, okay? All the moves are winning here. Except one move, actually. If you queen, you're not going to win. But any other move wins here. King f6. Bravo. Bravo. He goes here. Yeah, if you can make a move and then promote into a queen, you take that, okay? You take that deal, okay? And then checkmate. So, this idea is called triangulation. Got it? That's how you triangulate to win this. So, it essentially, you achieve the same position with opponent's move to make. Then you win it, okay? Okay? To make sure you understand this concept, I'll just do one more example of it it's for you. So you just... Same idea works here. If you make a wrong move now, you can really spoil this, okay? You can really, really spoil it. So you don't want to make a wrong move now. You just want to find the right move, and then you win the game. White to move, yes. So, just the same concept as you did before. So, what do you do? Yes. King e2. If he goes away, you just push and play g5. So, he has to go here. Now. King d2. King f3, yes, king e5. You're not accomplishing anything. Now he goes here. If now, if he goes back with the king, you just take the pawn, okay? If he goes here, just push. Just push. Got it? And you win it. 
So again, so the idea was king e2, it goes here. If he goes there, you just push the pawn, okay? Then he cannot do anything. You walk up, win this pawn. So he has to go here, you go here, and achieve the same position. So the only way you can do that in a king and pawn endgame, where you use the triangulational idea to get the same position, okay? It's very important for you to remember that, okay? You know, in the king and pawn endgame, this idea of triangulation. There are some other positions that we're going to work on next few weeks, a few weeks when I'm in, in St. Louis about end games. End games, I really like them. It's one of my specialties, and I grew up studying a lot of end games. Uh, you know, we'll talk about some other end game position. Uh, you know, concepts. You know, uh, like uh, distant opposition, regular opposition. You know and few other uh, type of position. But uh, today, one of the main thing was to learn how to checkmate with the bishop and knight. And I feel like, you know, all the people here understood this idea. I recommend you practice this at home with a friend or with somebody, just practice at home because you're not going to get too often, you know, this position. So practice will help. I'm sure you can probably do this, uh, you know, using some software as well, you know. You can, you can set up this, let's say, in chess space. If you really want to know if you can win this, set up this against chess space and play against the computer. Or chess.com probably have that. So just use that to practice, OK? Just practice, because it's, it's rarely you get. It's not like a checkmate with a queen or a rook. It's a rare. So that's why you want to make sure you get some practice so you can do this, OK? And the two bishops we did was quite easy, right? Very easy because you just, the most important thing is, remember, is not to steal mate. That's probably the only way that you're not going to be able to win if you just steal mate him, okay? Because, you know, otherwise the concept is pretty simple. With the rook positions we did, was important to put him into that suksuvan, remember? The king on c6, queen on d8, rook on b7, king on a7. That concept is the suksuvan. And the king and pawn endgames we did like this is just triangulation. Once again, everybody, triangulation means what, basically? The whole point of triangle. What is the whole point? The big picture of the triangulation. Same position with opponent's turn. Okay, excellent. All right. Good job, everybody. Thank you for coming, and uh, we'll see you on Thursday. Okay.